Hello everyone. In this video we'll be solving a factorial system. This is a new type of problem and I'm very excited. I know some people are going to use trial and error and guess the solutions and that's okay. But remember, it's about the journey, not the destination. Also part of the challenge is finding all solutions and proving that there are no more. Let's get started. So we do have x factorial plus y factorial is equal to z factorial and x plus y is equal to z. And we're going to be looking for non-negative integer solutions. So what do we do? Since we're given the system, we can just go ahead and replace z with x plus y in the first equation. That makes sense, doesn't it? So that gives us x factorial plus y factorial is equal to x plus y factorial. So basically, after finding the values of x and y, we can just go ahead and add them and find the values of z. Okay? So, what am I going to do with this? Well, since these two things are equal, I can just go ahead and divide both sides by one of them and get one from them. And let's see if that's going to help us. So, I'd like to divide both sides by x factorial plus y factorial. And you're going to see why in a little bit. That makes more sense to keep the x plus y quantity factorial in the numerator. All right. So I'm going to divide by the left hand side and that should give me one. Now, how am I going to proceed from here? Well, it doesn't really give us much except here we do know, we do see that this is equal to one, but look at the numerator and the denominator and you're thinking, okay, wouldn't that be nice if instead of this, if we had the product at the bottom, what am I talking about? So I'm talking about something like this. Instead of this, wouldn't that be nice if we had x plus y quantity factorial divided by x factorial times y factorial? Why would that be nice? Well, because this means something. If you think about counting or combinatorics or combinations in particular, this should tell you something. Isn't this x choose y, right? And of course, we're making an assumption here and that doesn't really hurt the equation x being greater than or equal to y without loss of generality. We can do that, right? Because x and y are basically interchangeable. So, since this gives us x choose y, and what do we know about x choose y? Well, it's an integer, right? In number theory, we use this fact a lot that x choose y is an integer if x and y are non-negative integers and x is greater than or equal to y. Now, in this case, we're talking about an integer here, but look at the left-hand side. Does that mean anything? No, not really. But here's the thing. If you go ahead and replace, if you go ahead and replace the numerator with something, it'll make sense. How? Well, since we know that x plus y factorial is equal to x factorial plus y factorial, we can just go ahead and do the replacement. Let's go ahead and do that. That gives us something nice. Why? You'll see now, x factorial plus y factorial divided by x factorial y factorial is equal to x choose y. Therefore, this is an integer. Great. Now, how does that help us? Well, first of all, think about it like you can separate these into two pieces, right? It's kind of like the sum of two fractions with a common denominator. And what is that common denominator? x factorial, y factorial. So I can just go ahead and separate these like x factorial divided by this plus y factorial divided by this. Awesome. What can I do next? Well, I can just go ahead and simplify this because x factorial cancels out and I end up with 1. y factorial cancels out and I end up with 1. And I still know that this is an integer, so don't forget that. But I can just go ahead and write it as I'd like to write the x first if you don't mind. 1 over x factorial plus 1 over y factorial and we know that this is supposed to be an integer. Now this is the most critical part. How can you get two, two positive integers because we know that x factorial and y factorial are always positive integers. How can you add the factor, uh, the pr what's that called? What's the word? Reciprocal, yes. How can you add the reciprocal of two positive integers and still get an integer? It's very rare, right? Don't you think? Well, you can have something like this. Maybe 1 half plus 1 half is going to give you an integer where x and y are both 2. Or it can be something like 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 
is equal to 2. Again, that's an integer. But we don't really have any other cases because if you think about it, if you have like a 1 third at the bottom or 3 at the bottom, 1 third is not going to give you because you need a 2 thirds or something plus 2 thirds to make it an integer, so on and so forth. So these are the only cases. But these cases give us other cases. For example, if x factorial and y factorial are both 2, this just means that x is 2, y is 2. Great. Now, if x factorial and y factorial are both 1, this means a number of things. For example, x and y can both be 1, or they can be 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0. You know that they can switch around, and what happens is 0 factorial also happens to be 1, right? Okay, cool. So I can just write all these possibilities and then see if they work for us. Obviously, not all of these are going to work, or at least we have to check our original equations. What is the original equation? Now remember, we had a system, right? And we turned it into a single equation in x and y. So we kind of temporarily got rid of the z, which is kind of good for the time being because it's going to make it a little easier to solve. So what I have is basically x factorial plus y factorial is equal to x plus y quantity factorial. Great, now let's go ahead and plug all these values in and see which ones are good. So for example, if you go ahead and try 2 factorial plus 2 factorial, is that equal to 2 plus 2 factorial? And you'll immediately see that this is equal to 24, but unfortunately that's not equal to 24, so they're not equal, and this case is not going to work. Okay, let's try another one. What about 1 factorial plus 1 factorial? W would that be equal to 1 plus 1 factorial, which is 2? And that is absolutely true. So this would work for us. Okay, great. Let's continue. How about 1 and 0? Let's try that out. So 1 factorial and 0 factorial. Does that give me 1 plus 0 factorial? But this is equal to 1. This is equal to 2. So they're not equal. So this is not going to work, obviously, for the same reason because of the symmetry. 0 comma 1 is not going to work either. How about 0, 0? Well, 0 factorial plus 0 factorial is equal to 2 but 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 factorial is equal to 1, so these are not equal either. So the only solution we end up getting is 1 comma 1, but that means that since z is equal to x plus y, I can basically write my solution as an ordered triple, and that would look like 1, 1, and 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to like comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video at the same time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.